today's video, I'm going to share my top 15 best Dollar Tree DIYs that you can make for spring 2023. So let's get started. First up is this really easy wood cutout that is a Kirkland's dupe using one of the seasonal cutouts you can get from the Dollar Tree. So I found this Dollar Tree wood cutout. I love this bunny one. It's a little bit different than the ones they usually have. I prefer this style. Let me know if you like the side style better than like the front one. I just, I'm kind of over the typical one that they have. So I was excited to see something new. And then I'm going to take some of this paint. I'm going to water it down and that's going to create kind of like a faux stain. It looks pretty opaque when you put it on. I'm using a sponge brush, but as it dries and then you wipe some away, it does kind of go into the wood grain, giving it that stain look. So I'm going to carefully take off the little bunny tail. We are going to put that back. And then I'm going to use some tape just to mark off where the color block will be. Once I have that taped down, I'm going to go ahead and use our faux stain for the top half going over everything, the ears, the, the whole top half. And as you see, it is opaque, but it does dry to give a really nice stain look, which is a great little hack you could do if you want the look of stain, but you don't want to deal with the mess and the smell because anyone else just hate the smell of wood stain. Like, ugh, it bothers my nose. It gives me a headache. So faux stain all the way. I'm just going to take a rag and wipe away some as it's drying just to show a little bit more of that wood grain. And you are going to see when I peel away the tape, there is a little bit of bleeding with this, um, the water mix, but we are going to fix that once we go in with the color. And I apologize for my voice. I am not even sick. I've just been having this raspy situation for a while. So as it's doing it again, but we're gonna power through. I like to go in with my blow dryer just to make sure that everything is nice and dry before peeling that tape. And there is bleeding with the tape, like I said, or the paint, but we will fix that. So we're gonna do the color block first. I'm gonna readjust the tape so it goes over where the line of the color block is gonna start and I'm gonna paint it with this beautiful Arteza color in lavender. Once that paint is dry, we're going to peel away the tape. And then there was just a little area that was still showing the um, stain. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that mix on a rag and I'm just going to try to fill that in, but go, or I use the paintbrush, not the rag, go upwards and do very lightly. You don't wanna go down because then that water mix will go on the color block. So I just lightly brush that. There's still a little bit showing, but that big chunk is gone, which is what I wanted, so that you did not see that wood or MDF board. I think this is wood. This is a wood cutout um, showing. And then a little hot glue to the bunny tail. And then to make this stand up, I did decide to hot glue some Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks to the back just so that I can stand this up on a tabletop and have a little bit more stability. So this is kind of the style that I like when it comes to spring or Easter decor. Very simple, super easy to make, and this is a great way to get that Kirkland's look for a whole lot less. adding greenery and light colors in my spring decor. So this is a piece that could be used year round, but it's great for a spring project and a nice refresh. It actually came from Pinterest and I'm obviously not gonna make it exact, but it will be inspired using Dollar Tree items. So starting out with this seasonal love sign from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna use the back and then make sure I sand down where the staples were. Then taking a combination of this Pearl Space Gray from Arteza and this Warm Buff Apple Barrel paint, I'm going to give this kind of a grayish weathered wood look. So first combining the two colors together, giving this one good coat. And then once that is dry, gonna go in with just the warm buff and 
give this some distressing. I have been loving this color lately. I feel like it's a great spring dry brushing color. I've had this in my craft stash forever, so I've just been using it a lot more lately. Now, I wanted to go for this light weathered rustic look, but of course you can always change up the colors to fit the decor in your home. Now, taking one of these garden fences from Dollar Tree, we are going to be using this upside down and also going in with that warm buff acrylic paint from Apple Barrel. I just did a kind of light dry brushing over this. Since this does kind of have that grayish tone that our sign has, I wasn't too worried about um, adding a ton of dry brushing to this. I just wanted to highlight this a little bit. So that is what I did with the warm buff paint. And now that most Dollar Trees are bringing out their spring stuff, this is the time to stock up on these. These are a great crafting item to have. So once all the paint is dry, we are just going to attach this piece by hot gluing the long sign on top of the garden fence. And as you can see here, the top is technically the bottom since we will be using this upside down. I felt that this is a great way to attach the sign, also giving us those rounded edges for the bottom and what would be the bottom of this sign makes it really easy to adhere to our longer sign. And super awkward arm angle, but I just pressed everything down to make sure that the hot glue stood in place. And then once I flipped it over, I went ahead and just reinforced it with a little bit more hot glue. Now I did also tie a piece of jute so I can hang this, but I actually found that hanging this on the wall, the nail just kind of picked up the grooves that are already on the fence, so I technically did not need that. But I just wanted to share that that's another way that you could technically hang this if you wanted. I wanted to keep this piece simple, but I did want to add some greenery or florals to this just to add a little bit more of a spring vibe to it. So I have had this greenery forever in my craft stash. This is from Hobby Lobby, but you can certainly use Dollar Tree florals or greenery. I just kind of draped that and then attached it by tucking it in to the back of this sign. And that is it. I love this, it's a beautiful statement piece. It looks beautiful on its own. You can also do this as part of a gallery wall or even above a TV it would be really pretty for this piece. It's a fun take on a bunny wreath using some ribbon, some macrame cord, and some florals from Dollar Tree to find this bunny wreath form let me know in the comments if you have found this at Dollar Tree I was so excited so what I did was I just pre-cut some macrame cord I will have in the description box below my favorite macrame cord I get it off Amazon um, and I wasn't sure how long I needed the pieces I originally cut them too long so I would say these are about four to five inches it depends how long you want the fringe to be but basically you're just gonna fold those pieces in half and you are gonna loop them through with a lark's head knot for all of the ears. This took some time, but it works up pretty quick. So you're gonna do this for both of the bunny ears. Let me know in the comments when you are going to start decorating for spring or Easter. I know Easter is a little later this year, but I'm just so over the cold and I think I'm going to decorate for spring at least like soon. So once I had both the ears done, I took some of this ribbon. I got this on clearance after Christmas at, I don't remember now if it was Hobby Lobby or Walmart, but any ribbon will do, or you can go around with the macrame cord. I just wanted a nice pattern, and I felt like this looked really nice. Now, I sped this up because basically I just wrapped it. The big thing with this, with using a ribbon, is just make sure that you use some hot glue and you secure it once you are done wrapping. I felt like this bunny needed a flower crown, so I'm taking some of these Valentine's um, velvet flowers from the Dollar Tree. I ended up using two packs because I just wanted the light. I just felt like the purple was reminding me of like Barney a bit. So I just arranged them, hot glued them. You can also totally use just regular Dollar Tree florals, but I liked the look. Did I say velvet? 
before. I think these are felt. They're not velvet. I don't know why I said that, but I like the look of these. So that's what I went with. Now, a step that you don't want to miss with this is brushing out the macrame cord. It looks kind of silly and floppy just having the cord as is. So I'm taking a Dollar Tree brush and I am just carefully brushing. You don't want to brush too hard to like kind of unravel everything, but you want to do enough that it's fringed and then you can trim at the ears once you are done fringing out all the cord. So fun, nice and boho, easy to make, and I really love the way that this turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Here's some really easy boho eggs that you can use using Dollar Tree Easter eggs. So for my version of this, I'm going to take some Dollar Tree eggs, add some trim that the Dollar Tree has, also some macrame cord to get that same look. So I'm going to take three of the eggs that come in a six pack and for the first egg, I'm going to take some of this trim from Dollar Tree. I love this. This is new to Dollar Tree. I've noticed this around the holidays. It's when I picked up the white, but I've seen now for spring, they have some other colors. I'm going to trim a piece and then hot glue it to the egg. Now, now, of course you can paint these eggs but I liked the way that the gold looked as it flies away from me um, against the white so I left it as is. For our second egg, I took a piece of macrame cord and then I took three more pieces and added them as a lark. No, did I do three? Yes, I did. Three pieces and added them as a lark's head knot on that anchor piece. And then once I had that, I trimmed them and frayed them just to give a little bit of a fringe look, but have it be different than that Dollar Tree trim. Once you have the pieces on that main string, I kind of loosened up the cord and I trimmed it and then I'm gonna attach this with some hot glue. Now, of course, you can also add some macrame knots to this. You can do lace, lots of different options, but I just think the cord fringe looks really nice and it definitely has that Pinterest inspired look. Everything is glued and trimmed. I decided to style this on this five below shelf that I got. It kind of has that boho look and these are so cute. Definitely a different take on some spring Easter decor eggs. Another piece that can be used year round, but again, it has that light airiness. So it's great for spring decor. For this project, you will need two of these kind of decor open boxes from Dollar Tree. And as you can see, they have some really glittery wording and accents to them. So a Dollar Tree sanding sponge will get rid of that. And I did that for both of these pieces. And then I just took some white chalk paint and painted over the design and wording on both of these boxes. And let me know in the comments if you have seen these at your Dollar Tree. These are new to me and I wanted to get some more. If I see them again, I think I have another idea. Um, but yeah, these are definitely new to me. So I have not seen these at my Dollar Tree. Once those pieces are painted, we're going to add some of these laser cut clocks from Dollar Tree. I think these are so pretty. I actually had my friend Kristen K pick these up for me and she was so sweet to send them to me. I have not seen these at my Dollar Tree either. I know some people, I have seen hauls where they have different laser cut pieces and I thought these were really pretty. They kind of had like a vintage look to them. So I left them unfinished and I thought they really popped against the white. And then to add a little warmth to this, we will be taking some warm buff apple barrel craft paint and dry brushing it throughout these box pieces.
I love this faux leather ribbon from Dollar Tree. I have used this in as many DIYs as I possibly can lately. I think it's so pretty. It definitely gives a very polished high-end look to your crafts. So I took a scrap piece that I had since I've been using it, like I said, in so many projects, and I decided to cut them both to size, probably about three inches, and then hot glue a little handle to the top of each, or not the top, the front, there we go, of each of these boxes. Now taking one of these small picture frames from Dollar Tree, I've used this in a recent DIY, which will be in the description box down below. You're just gonna wanna take off the piece that the frame can stand on because we will be hot gluing this to our sign. And I also provided a free printable, which is also in the description box below. We will be adding this to a long Dollar Tree seasonal sign that I already painted white and then adding some of these gemstone stickers. I love these. I've used these in so many projects and you're going to see them in one of our other DIYs in this video. I just added a strip to the top and the bottom of this piece. Then again, going in with that warm buff acrylic paint, we're just going to dry brush right over those gemstone stickers. These come in all different colors. I went with the um, silver or kind of clear ones for this project, so I didn't have to do a ton of painting over them, but throughout the entire sign, I just went ahead and did some dry brushing. And once everything is dry, it is time to hot glue. So first you're going to want to kind of just space everything out. I didn't measure, I just kind of eyeballed, but I placed everything down where it's going to be glued. So that way as I'm gluing, I can make sure that everything is in the exact spot that I want it and that it's nice and even. I love these long seasonal signs that Dollar Tree carries. I love being able to transform them into a piece that is great for the season or year round. So here I have some spring florals. I went very neutral for this project, but of course you can add whatever color florals that you want. This is perfect for spring, but also be can be transitioned to year round decor. Great on a gallery wall or on its own. Really easy way to get a tea towel with a design without having to use a cutting machine. This I'm using my hippo paper that you just use in your inkjet printer and the paper basically replaces the need for a cutting machine and iron-on vinyl which is so awesome. Now when you're cutting the image you want to get as close to the image as possible because that white background will show up. Now it's not a big deal because I'm putting this on a white base, but if you're putting this on darker fabric, just keep that in mind. So this could not get any easier. I have the free printable down in the description box below for you. You are just going to cut this out, then take your base. I like to iron first just to smooth out any wrinkles. And this is a flour sack towel, like I said, from the Dollar Tree. And once you have those wrinkles out, you're just going to peel very gently the printable, the paper is very fine because it is going to adhere and iron onto the um, base. So you need a barrier. I just used some wax paper and all you need on a low heat is 10 seconds with firm pressure and then you peel away that barrier and you have an amazing cutting free list option for a dish towel. And I love this, like I said, the printable will be in the description box below. Tree always has these hats or purses around the springtime. So they are great to make a whole bunch of decor. I'm gonna show you a functional way and a decorative way to use them. Recently when I saw these bags, it made me think of that kind of rattan, 
um, boho look and I knew that I can get it using these bags. So for the first project, we're gonna make a tray using this sign or picture frame from the Dollar Tree. So you're just gonna go ahead and remove the backing and you wanna keep the cardboard part because that is what we'll be using to trace the bag as well as adhere this to the piece. get the most out of this bag, you want to go ahead and cut the handles as well as cut the side of both, oh, both sides, there we go, of the bag. So you kind of have a longer piece. Now there will be kind of a bump in the middle as you'll see in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of work around that. This way when you flatten the bag, like I said, you get the most out of it. And I was able to make most of these projects using one bag. So total for the five projects you'll see in this video, I used one and a half bags and I have some left over. So you want to kind of hold this firmly so that you can get a good marking and I'm going to measure where I need to make my cuts. Now, let me know in the comments if you love the kind of boho rattan look. It is one of my favorites, and this is such a great way to achieve that look. Also, these bags come in other colors, but don't let that deter you. You can always spray paint them in a neutral color to get that authentic rattan look. So once this is trimmed, or not trimmed, traced, then you're going to trim it words are hard at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, I'm going to trim this and then I just want to make sure that it fits. Now you're going to see for most of these projects that the rattan or faux rattan is going to go over the backing a little bit. That's fine. Once we secure everything with hot glue, then I go back and trim everything so it stays in place. So I took off the little picture stand part of this backing and then a little bit of hot glue at a time. Be careful doing this obviously because there's openings and you could burn your hand. Um, a little bit of of hot glue in sections at a time and this is going to secure this to the backing so we can make this the base of our tray. We have that hot glued. I'm going to flip this over, see where I need to make my cuts and I've been loving the Dollar Tree detailing scissors. They're perfect for getting into small sections like this. They're sharp and they work great. So let me know if you've picked these up also. These are like an unexpected crafting must have for me at the Dollar Tree. Put the backing back in. I'm just gonna make sure that everything is nice and trim, any frayed pieces are gone. And this is our tray. This is so fun. It definitely has that boho rattan look. And this is how I styled it. And I feel like this definitely just gives a more rattan-esque look. Let me know what you think of this in the comments down below. Some really easy Easter basket or bag tags you can use. These also make great gifts and they work up really quick. So I needed an O and an L, but I got a C and an L. We're gonna hack it, make it an O. Um, these are so cute. I have not seen these before at the Dollar Tree. I instantly knew that these would be great for my girls' Easter baskets. So to make that C and O, I am going to add some craft sticks. I'll be covering them with some butterfly stickers so you won't see the craft sticks, but I just needed something to kind of close up that C. And then for both of them, I went ahead and painted with some white chalk paint. I did the front, the back, the side, so everything was nice and covered. really fun butterfly stickers at Dollar Tree. They have stripes, they have a leopard print to them. Um, so I thought these would be cute. I did add some hot glue just to make sure that they really stay on. Since these will be going on my girls Easter baskets, I just wanted to make sure that they had, you know, more durability. So I added some to both of them and I think it's a nice just spring accent.
I do want to add, there's a lot of different things you can do to this. I just wanted to keep it simple. And I think the pop of color from the stickers against the white is just fun. These are really cute and easy to make. And I hope to use these the next couple years. It's just nice charms for my girls' Easter baskets and let them know which basket is whose. macrame hangers in my home and macrame decor i have it all the time year round but this is a great beginner friendly macrame project and it is something that works up fast and it's great for displaying either real or fake plants We're gonna do some simple macrame. So taking some of this cotton craft cord, I picked this because I had it actually already on hand. It's from Hobby Lobby, and it's very similar to the inspiration piece from Anthropology. And I compared it here to some of the new Dollar Tree cotton kind of thicker nautical rope. It's comparable, it's a little bit thinner, but you can certainly use a few packs of the Dollar Tree nautical rope instead if that is what you want. So I went ahead and I cut six strands at about 90 inches long and I just folded them in half and put them on this wood ring that I got from Hobby Lobby. I could put it down in the description box below and I did a simple gathering knot for the top of this piece. I just did a macrame video using Dollar Tree items. I will have that down in the description box below going over kind of basic knots. But this is a really easy plant hanger. All you're going to do is work with four strands at a time. There will be six strands, so you're going to do some square knots and I did three square knots on the top. I went down about I would say three and a half, four inches from that gathering knot. And I'm doing the first square knot here in kind of real time so you can see how easy it is. But all this plant hanger is, is a row going around of three square knots, about three and a half to four, I would say four inches down from the gathering knot. And once you have those three, you're going to continue another set of square knots about three and a half, four inches down from the first row of your square knots. So there you have it for the first set of square knots. Now again, going down about three and a half, four inches, you're going to complete three more square knots working with the four strands of this cotton cord. Um, let me know down in the description box below if your Dollar Trees get that new like cotton nautical rope. I only was able to find one at my Dollar Tree, but I definitely want to go back and get some more. So once you have the second set of square knots, you are just going to connect the square knots you just did with taking two strands from the one square knot, two strands from the next, and you connect them with another square knot. I'm going through this a little bit fast because I did a way more detailed macrame beginner friendly um, project video recently. So I will have that down below and I just gathered everything with another simple gathering knot. Now what gives this really that anthropology inspired look is the original piece had these really simple tassels. So I made three tassels using some white yarn I had on hand and I just connected them to the square knots on the second row just by looping the yarn through, tying a knot, and then trimming it. Super simple, and I love the way that the white tassels look against this kind of like deep mustardy, if we wanna call it, <laughs> um, rope. And then I just trimmed everything, and there you have it. This cotton cord cost was $5.99. I had a 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby. I had the yarn on hand and this took me all of like 10 minutes. So a super simple way that you can also use the Dollar Tree nautical rope or whatever you have on hand to get an anthropology, really sleek, modern farmhouse, boho farmhouse, whatever you wanna call it, piece of room decor that gives you kind of some fun texture, which you know I love, and you get that anthropology inspired look for way less. Up, we're gonna make some really fun and easy coasters. So Dollar Tree has these cute wood bunny and wood egg 
um, cutouts. So I decided to take some leftover peel and stick wallpaper. I just added this to the accent wall in my living room and I like using the peel and stick wallpaper as a coaster top because if it gets wet, it's not going to mess up the wood the same way it would if you just painted it. Now, of course, if you paint these or stain these and you want to use them as a functional coaster, I highly recommend um, finishing them with a top coat so that they're protected. But this is a great little hack if you just don't feel like dealing with stain and that whole process of sealing it. You could just take some peel and stick wallpaper. I recommend using a thicker, good quality wallpaper and you just trace, cut, and go and make sure that the edges um, line up. That's what I'm doing here, just trimming, kind of smoothing everything out. But I thought this made it a lot more fun, kind of boho looking, which I go for. And I did this for the bunny as well as the egg cutout. Next is a boho take on a wreath, so you're going to get that greenery and that boho look with the yarn hanging. So to make the yarn hanging, I'm going to take two strands of yarn. I'm actually mixing a yarn and a strand of jute, and you're just going to wrap it around whatever piece of cardboard or mat you're working with. I wanted this to be longer. I only had a six inch mat, so I wrapped it around twice, but ideally if I wanted this to be longer, I would just use like a 12 inch mat, but depending on the size mat that you use to make your fold and cut will make the length of the yarn that you're using. So once I made all my cuts, I took these spare dowels that I had. These are from Hobby Lobby. Um, you can use um, Dollar Tree dowels, whatever you have on hand. And I am just going to loop all the yarn on to one of them. We will be making a triangle, so that is why we're using three of the dowels. And for this, I ended up having to cut some more yarn because I wanted the hanging to be a little fuller. So also personal preference of how much you want the yarn to be full, then it would just depend on how many pieces that you cut. So once I have all the yarn set, I'm going to kind of eyeball the way that I want the dowels to make a triangle. First, I'm going to apply some hot glue just to set the dowels in place before I wrap them and reinforce them with some twine. And I'm just gonna press everything down, making sure it sets before I do that. some Dollar Tree Natural Jute. I am going to wrap that around the three corners of the triangle, first tying a knot and then wrapping over where we hot glued. This will just reinforce the triangle shape and make sure that everything stays in place. And then to hang this, the easiest way that I found was taking what will be the back of the triangle, cutting a small piece of a craft stick, and then I cut another piece of jute, hot glued that, folded on top or underneath that craft stick, and then created a loop, and that's how I'm gonna hang this on the wall. And then I wanted to incorporate my green in this project, so taking this Hobby Lobby lamb's ear wreath, you can use any wreath that you have. It just adds a nice touch to this. I'm going to apply a little bit of hot glue underneath just to make sure it stays on the triangle, and that is it. I love the simplicity of this project. I love adding the subtlety of the green to it. If you are not new to my channel, you know how much I love wall hangings. I have made quite a few of them. Um, they definitely are just that boho look that I love, and this was so easy to make. I am 
fresh idea is to take some glass bottles from the Dollar Tree and freshen them up. So that's what we did here. And this turned out really, really good. And it was so easy to make. Take an assortment of glasses. This large bottle as well as this smaller one are both from the Dollar Tree. And I'm also going to use a recycled pickle jar because it's pretty and why not? So to do this, you're gonna take food dye. I'm gonna use green since that is the color I'll be using for this challenge. And I usually mix it with Mod Podge, but I don't have that on hand. So some regular Elmer's glue will work fine. The key to this is using a sponge brush. At least I find it much easier to do it with that. So you're gonna take your glue and first dump it out on whatever surface you're mixing it with. And then I am gonna add two drops of the food dye. As you're gonna see, it's gonna look really, really bright. And you're gonna wanna dilute this a little more. So I added more glue. Um, you just don't want too much color. And then you just paint it on. Now the difference I find with doing this versus like painting something regularly is when you paint and you don't want to keep like going back to where you painted to spread it because you want everything to be even and dry you do the opposite with this because it's mixed with a glue it is thicker so you're going to want to keep moving around dipping your brush as little as possible into the mixture that is what's going to give it that really thin stained look. And then anywhere that you see, because I'm using green, kind of almost a brighter green, you're going to want to really smooth that out with the brush so that when it dries, it looks stained and not painted. And that is what I've noticed with this, that spreading it instead of adding more just works better. I really do enjoy this technique. I was so excited when I stumbled across this on Pinterest a while back. It really does give that really pretty vintage effect and it's a great way too to not only use Dollar Tree glass but upcycled glass. So this is what the pickle jar looks like when it's dried. You just see how pretty and stained and it gives like really that stained glass look, not painted. So. I am going to add a tassel using some yarn I had on hand and some Dollar Tree jute. Um, I decided to add this onto the larger glass bottle just to kind of break up all the green and add some more color and you guessed it, texture to this project. Um, I've made a lot of tassels on my channel, so I'm speeding through this. Um, I will leave a more detailed tassel DIY video that I've done down below in the description box in case you're interested, but I don't wanna bore you guys in case you have seen a lot of my projects recently because I do make tassels often. So this is what the glass, the faux stained glass looks like. I love this. You can do this with any food dye. I actually always use green. I just love that really light look that it has, but this will look beautiful in blue and yellow, and you can even mix the food dye to get a different look. And super simple and just totally takes these plain glass jars and just gives them a totally different look. You make me making wreath inserts on my channel and this is a really easy way to get that look with using Dollar Tree items. Taking one of these wood egg cutouts, now there are so many things that you could do with these. Um, I decided just to keep this kind of like minimal. I wanted a more boho look. Again, that's more my style, but of course this is just for inspiration. You can paint, stain, whatever you want, whatever colors you like. Um, I'm using the Arteza paint markers. These are the oil markers. Now I will say because this is wood, they run just a little bit. Not a lot, but they do run a little bit. So keep that in mind only on this wood surface. It just kind of acts like a stain and spreads a bit. 
So I'm using gold for these stripes on the egg and then I'm just kind of leaving it as is. I did get a little bit of the marker on the actual egg, but real life. So this, I'm using this leftover Christmas sign, but any sign will do, or you could just leave the egg as is. But this I liked because it had the round shape. Um, I wanted to cover it again in some of that peel and stick wallpaper from Dollar Tree, the wood chevron. I'm just obsessed with it. So I trimmed that out and then I did go ahead and paint the bottom just so that it is um, not the MDF board since the peel and stick did not cover that. Once that is painted, I did two coats. I'm gonna add my peel and stick wallpaper and then I'm gonna hot glue the egg on. I did provide a printable, it has a little welcome sign. That will be in the description box below, but that is it for this project. Super quick and easy, a great just spring door hanger or wreath insert, however you wanna display it. And that is it for this project. Projects can be used year round, but they're great for spring decor and they work great as a vignette together. I'm gonna first start out with these fun vintage stacked books. For this, I'm using this wood tray from Dollar Tree. I'm using one of the larger square trays and then one of these crates. Um, I have seen a lot of people make these into stacked books, so I'm not really reinventing the wheel here with that, but I wanted to do my own fun take on it with a little bit more of vibrant colors and give it a little bit more of a kind of rustic vintage vibe. So for the first book, our bottom book, I am using this beautiful teal color from Arteza. I always have a coupon code for them down below in the description box. But I just absolutely love this color. For me, when I think of spring decor for some reason, I always think of really vintage kind of weathered decor. So that's the look I was going for for this, but you can of course use whatever colors that you have. Just don't forget to paint the inside kind of handles of these faux books. Now the next crate, which is gonna be two books. We're gonna go in with this kind of violet purple color from Arteza, and I'm gonna paint the two lines on the crate so it looks like one book, and then I just kind of paint drew, that's even a word, a line, and I made sure that this wrapped around so it looked like one cohesive set of books. And then taking this olive green color, we're going to paint the top of this crate so it looks like one thin book. I purposely use the paintbrush that I just used that purple on, just so when I am painting the olive green, you see a little bit of it on top and it kind of gives a more burgundy effect. We will be dry brushing and distressing this so the colors won't be as bold, but you can still see them. So we will be using this warm buff paint to dry brush. I've been loving this lately and I feel like it really complements these colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of our three faux books. Also, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me know what you guys enjoy watching and it also helps my channel out. So if you like this, definitely give me a thumbs up. Once all of our faux books are painted, it is time to make these look a little more book-like. So taking this gray Arteza paint marker, I'm just gonna kind of give like binding lines. My original, idea with this was to go in with my Cricut, but for some reason the font that little was just not working for me. Let me know if that happens to you when you cut vinyl. I find when I do really small, thin font, no matter what I put the needle pressure to, it just always seems to mess up the vinyl. So for this, I decided to just write Jane Eyre. I'm actually an English major and I had to read all the classics as part of my degree. So I wanted to do a little like nod to that and I used this Dollar Tree stencil to do that. And then I have one of these sticker stencils. This is from Arteza also, I've had this forever. 
and I am just going to fill in the number one just to give this a little bit of an eclectic book stack kind of look. And then I just want to go over everything with a little bit of that warm buff again, just so it doesn't look so stark and it gives it more of that weathered appearance. Then taking some of the Dollar Tree jute, I just cut a piece and then wrapped it around the books twice just so they look more put together. And then I tied a basic bow on top before adding some spare greenery. I always like keeping like random broken pieces because they come in handy for projects like this. Now to go with this rustic vintage inspired vignette, I'm going to take some of this Dollar Tree reindeer moss and this thrifted piece that I've had for a while and I'm just going to go ahead and fill it with the Dollar Tree reindeer moss. The texture of this is so weird and it's super messy so I was trying really hard not to get this all over the place and then I just fluffed it a little bit before adding our Dollar Tree Easter eggs to it. I'll be using some of these gold eggs. We will be painting them, but I just wanted to see how many would fit in here. And I determined that for the size bowl that I'm using, um, three is what I needed. So I'm going back in with the space gray and warm buff paint, and I am going to put the eggs on a skewer so they're a little bit easier to paint. And I'm just gonna dab these so they kind of have like, not quite a galvanized look, but not quite like a hammered look kind of more like almost a vintage stone look, if that's even a thing. So that is it for the eggs, and I feel like they just pair so well with these beautiful rustic farmhouse vintage books. I love this for spring and Easter decor, and this was such a simple yet beautiful vignette to make. Hope you enjoyed these top 15 best Dollar Tree DIYs for spring. These were some of my favorites that I made last year and the year before. Um, I will be sharing new spring content very soon, so make sure you are subscribed and you have that notification bell turned on so you don't miss that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.